Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. This episode 171 on this beautiful Thursday morning. Glad to see everybody here. And uh, today, like every Thursday, is business development, entrepreneurship. I'm in the, the new Studio 11, which is starting to come together. And uh, good. it's uh, awesome to see my good friend, Matt. How are you today? I'm blessed, Mike. Good to see you as well. Looking forward to uh, one of our favorite shows. It's hard to pick a favorite. Like if somebody sat us down today and said, Mike and Matt, what is it? You have to pick one. Gun to your head, you have to pick one. Like that's going to be hard. Like, I don't even know how I could do this, but this is one of them, let's say. This would be in the race. This would be like, this would fight for the family and relationship show for our favorite, you know, yeah. at least in my take, you know what I'm saying, Mike? But uh, good to see say. you, buddy. Glad, glad you guys are getting settled in your new home. I'm happy for you. Looking forward to uh, some books going up on the shelf back behind you. Uh, looking yep. forward to seeing the fireplace on. Uh, all that good stuff, man. So excited about it. As the uh, fall weather rolls in, we might turn on the fireplace. It's uh, just an electric deal, so, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily have to put out heat. But it would feel a little disingenuous since it's about 95 degrees in my office right now. So, um, but, uh, we're uh, you know, we're working out the kinks. You know, if somebody held a gun to my head and said, what's your favorite thing? I'd be like, go ahead and pull the trigger because I can't decide. It's better home waiting oh, anyways. Shoot. Shoot me now! Shoot me now! I can't pick! <laughs> I'm coming home. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, quick, couple of quick uh, updates. And uh, I want to let remind everybody, if you're watching the show live today, thank you so much for being here. We're humbled if one person joins us live. Uh, and we know that hundreds watch in the archives, and we're thankful for you as well. Uh, every day, and people are watching the archives, they discover our show, and then they go back and listen and watch all the archives, and that's uh, it's awesome. We're, we're, we're blessed to be able to, to do it, and uh, happy uh, that it's a blessing to folks. Real quick, I want to remind everybody, you can ask questions during the show just by typing in the chat box over there on the other side of my friend, and uh, I think it's probably for everyone over there. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what device you're on. Of course, you can always uh, email them to me at mike at mathematics.com or you can even text them to us at uh, 727-341-55 niner niner so uh, that's our sort of automated text uh, number and uh, thanks Karen I'm uh, changing things up a little bit here in Studio 11 so we're um, trying to get things better I had a thought when you said we're humbled that one person watches we are humble. We're grateful that one person watches, but if only one person watches, we're angry. We're like, we're, we're like, we're not happy with one person, <laughs> but we're grateful for one person, my friends. And we are humbled that one person would take time out of their schedule to watch this um, feel for success. But we want right. one million. No, I want one billion. Like if there's seven billion people on the planet, Mike, this is what I'm this this one reality. Like when I travel, I mean I've been both of us have literally been all over the world. Literally. Yeah. It, it blows my mind how big the world is. And I just sometimes stand there and stare at people because I'm so fascinated with people. Like I sometimes they they look at me like why is that dude staring at me because I'm just like staring at him because I'm a people watcher and I gotta like catch myself you know that awkward moment when they know you're staring at them you know yeah and then all of a sudden you gotta hurry up and look away or look down or like smile or just you know what's even funnier is just keep staring one of these <laughs> keep one of these hey uh, <laughs> that's right and just to be clear uh, we're. If there was only one person were angry, the anger is directed at these two guys right here. Like, what are you doing? Come on. There's people we need to help. We're mad at us. We're mad at us because we're not producers. <laughs> Matt's not a creeper, but. We've had over 200,000 views on Fuel for Success. That's, that's exciting to me. Over 200,000 viewers, people have watched Fuel for Success. So thank you to all of you. So yeah, what do we cool. have in store today, Mike? Today is business and entrepreneurship and success and everything you could imagine. Let's talk. Right. Today we're going to talk a little bit about businesses keeping the wow factor. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a very specific topic, which is uh, uh, home internet service. 
from a recent experience that I had, which I think is going to be helpful to some folks that are maybe uh, starting home businesses and uh, being an entrepreneur out of their out of their home office. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let me actually start though with a question that came in from our good friend Tommy Turner, uh, and he asked about and it was. Uh, Tommy's a winner. Yeah, Tommy. I don't know. Where are you from, Tommy? I think he's going to go Mission 25 this year. I think it's in November, if I'm not mistaken. Cannot wait. I believe he's in Virginia. What's that? He's in Virginia. I believe he's in Virginia. Oh, good state. I love Virginia in the fall. Uh, yeah, Mike, it's he's... August 28th. Let this sink in. Are you ready? Let me let me really rattle your brain starting off early in the morning. August 28th, my friend. Yeah, the things are actually changing here. Yeah. I remember us saying, Mike, it's March 1st. I can't believe it's March 1st already. Anyway, let's get to the question, Mike. Yeah. And uh, I need focus out of you, my friend. I need focus out of you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm all the time going off on tangents. I apologize. I'll try to focus. Uh, so, so Tommy asked you, Tommy emailed in a great question, and uh, it's how can businesses keep the wow factor to stay relevant? Let me give you a little bit of backstory because uh, he, he gave a great, a great question with a lot of backstory. He's talking about uh, companies like Kmart, you know, some of the big box brands. Like Kmart was, you know, pretty much plowed under by Walmart. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, you know, Applebee's was popular for a while and they sort of declined. Denny's was popular for a while. They sort of declined and, and they, they, they didn't really stay relevant. They had a, you know, a peak and then they sort of declined because of probably because of success. And so he's asking, first of all, how can businesses keep the wow factor and stay relevant? But a follow up to that is, you know, are, are those sort of factors really even relevant to maybe a small town local business? Uh, maybe you're running a small storefront in a, in a, in a, local city are those things uh you know do those apply there as well uh your thoughts and i'll, I'll follow up with mine man uh good question tommy tommy asked the best questions him and al are racing each other for the for our top <laughs> question askers um look man in my opinion about keeping the wow factor alive in a business is number one let's first of all accept that Real business is hard. I don't care what anybody says. To deliver and to produce at a level of excellence is a daily sweat. It, literally, there's no easy way to it. You can't automate this. Like this requires extreme attention to detail and effort from the people of that business. And it, in, in a, to me, it all starts in the training of your employees. Uh, meaning like I am still wowed by Chick-fil-A because their employees, yay, though they're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars, they get the wow factor. They literally, I mean, the whole business model of Chick-fil-A to me is a wow because it's fast food, right? But anyways, Mike, in my opinion, and we've said this before, but this is like got to become a mantra for business. It's got to become something that like you put on the wall. What got you there, you have to do and more to keep you there. So what most people do when they get there, when they arrive, when they succeed, when they become the number one business in town, is they coast. They get arrogant. Like arrogance and ego is the death of business. So how many companies do you know that get big and you know, there's this arrogance, there's this, uh, there's this, um, you know, they almost have this, like this, this mentality, uh, or spirit or, you know, way of thinking like the world owes them. Like, you know, and in reality, I don't care how big you get. I don't care how popular you get. I don't care how number one you are in the world. You cannot lose what got you there. And what most people do when they get there is they stop doing it's it's what they call entitlement thinking. They they think they're entitled. Like the day you think you're entitled that you know people can't live without your stuff, like you've lost because you've turned into arrogance and ego and pride, which I've seen the it's like the Titanic. I mean literally. I mean the guy that built the Titanic literally said this thing is so powerful not even God could sink it. I mean, you just got to be careful. Like when you succeed, you've got to stay humble. You've got to stay aggressive. In fact, you've got to be more 
you've got to bring the wow factor more because when you reach that place of success in this day and age, in a matter of a year, three years, somebody out of the middle of nowhere, some nerd, some nobody, that's why I'm for treating everybody right. I tell my son all the time, there was this girl that wasn't real cute, you know, she wasn't real, like, you know, his buddies didn't think she was gorgeous. And I said, look, man, always treat them right because you never know what a year can bring. And sure enough, man, a girl that wasn't really that cute showed up this year and he was like, dad, I don't know what happened. But like, you know, and I said, see, that's why you always treat them right, son, because you never know. The nerds, the nobodies, they're coming after you, my friends. It's a good principle, treat people right. Hey, um, you know, I, I think about exactly what you're saying, and a real example is is when Walmart was really, you know, a, a sort of an even competitor with Kmart, and they sort of targeted Kmart and one, no pun intended. Um, what one of the things that they two things they did that crushed Kmart, and they were and they were really wow factor things for their customers. One was they focused on keeping all of their shelves stocked, so that people didn't ever walk in and find. Uh, you know what they wanted to buy wasn't there they focused on that and then uh, The other thing that they did and I don't know if you remember this this is a while back They don't do it anymore, but Walmart used to have a policy where if there was more than two people in a checkout line they would open another checkout and And those two things together really combined to crush Kmart uh, at least in my opinion those are but some strategies that they target, took. Target, target is beating Walmart upside the head because Walmart has done exactly what I just said. They've arrived and they they coasted. You know who's never yeah. coasted? Disney World. And that's why I love Disney World. Because they've never coasted. And they blow everybody up as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, go ahead, Mike. What you were saying? Mike's not a Kmart kid. Mike, when's the last time you've been to Kmart? Don't you kind of miss it? Uh, it's like a ghost town when you go in there. Um, I think there's one somewhere a few miles from here. No, I don't wow. go into Kmart. But uh, but you're exactly right, and, and exactly what you said, what I just said, the things that Walmart focused on to sort of crush Kmart, they don't do anymore. They stopped doing that. Last time I was in Walmart, you know, there were 15 people in line, and there were two checkouts, two out of 60 checkouts, and I'm like, hello, right? I don't see this at Target across the highway over there. So, uh, and you're exactly right, it's the small details that... Um, it's a good analogy. The, the yeah. Blowing. They stop blowing the mind. They stop like because they don't need it anymore. Remember when you needed a paycheck? Remember when you you were like you needed you know you want you the climb. See that's why you got to never quit climbing. And, the, and I'm telling you right now, let me tell you this: as a guy that's made it to the top in some industries, it's hard to keep climbing. Once you reach that place where it's easy and you know your talent and and you got it's hard. It's really hard. That's why I admire people like Grant Cardone. Grant, if you're watching, shout out to you, man. People like him and Gary Vaynerchuk, shout out to both of them. You know why? They both keep hustling. They both right. keep grinding. They both keep, you know, uh, executing. Brian Tracy. <laughs> Brian Tracy's like probably in his 70s. But the man's still putting out content. Still, you know, executing and sharing. And I love that, man. Yeah. Um, and there's some some comments here about Netflix and Redbox and Blockbuster. Uh, if you want to see like the the poster child for not understanding the market and not staying relevant in the community, Blockbuster is it. And really any video store, right? Blockbuster, Blockbuster literally said the words, "Oh, our people like to come into the store and browse and handle the movies." Have you ever talked to your customers? Nobody likes to go to the video store. Not me. I feel dirty when I go in there. It's like a dirty feeling. Yeah, well, I haven't, haven't been one in decades, but um, the uh, true I haven't. I'm like, going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I don't even know if there is one anymore. I don't know where I would even find a video store uh, because really, they, they, their time has passed. They missed that uh, that cultural shift. And so the follow-up question that Tommy asked was, uh, is, are these principles relevant to a small local business? And I think they're even more relevant to a small local business. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, unless you're the only game in town and it's something that everybody has to have, which is almost never the case, 
um, you're going to have to stay on top of culture and culture changes because you don't have a margin, the margin for error like Walmart does. I mean, Walmart could literally, you know, recover. They could see the trend and they would have 18 months to be able to recover because they've got that kind of buffer in their business model. Uh, if you're running, you know, a small local business and uh, let's say, for example, taught me a bike shop, right? And, uh, you, you know, you're running a thousand dollars margin a month. You know, you don't have a lot of time to be able to react. You need to stay on top of trends and figure out what people are, are wanting and, <clears throat> and really be able to wow your customers. And I think it, there's also a lot more opportunity to be directly involved with customer service and wow your customers in that, in that respect. Yeah, it's like this. I mean, we're, we currently have a startup. It's a missions movement. And we're in a, a market that we've spent the majority of our time promoting and marketing in that doesn't really, 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 really value or want a missions movement. So we've had to face that reality. Like you can keep, you can, you know, there's a couple of things you can do in business. The best thing to do is always be honest. Never like, listen, if you are of the type of business leader that will not listen or be honest about the marketplace or trends and you just insist that I know this is going to work. There's a difference between believing in yourself and being downright stupid. You know, my best advice for you in life is don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be stupid. That's good. Anything, but don't be stupid. That's, that's gold. We can shut the show down right now and change the world. Hey, True. Don't be stupid. We should, we should have a tag Feel for success. Mike, you're be grandpa today. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Carol's at the hospital right now. Um, today's the day. It's uh, I, don't know what, I don't know what I'm supposed to do as a best friend. Do I send you a box of cigars? I mean, what do we do on this nowadays? You know, cigars. Uh, for you. Toy? I think actually for you and everyone that's watching, cash is king. Just send cash. Cigars <laughs> every day in our world. <laughs> every day. Uh, yeah, virtual high five. I think that's what's in order. I know you used to struggle with it, but I cannot envision you smoking a cigar, man. I never struggled with it, but I did used to smoke cigars. I uh, used to smoke really good cigars, and I loved them. Um, where are we at? I know we're talking about hey. business and Kmart. Yeah. Hey, I want to segue real quick, and I want to talk real quick about the, uh, the, the, the home Internet because we've sort of built up to it a little bit, so I do want to cover it. At the risk of me going into a rant, uh, let me just sort of cover the, the situation that happened to me this week in my move and transfer because two things. One is uh, I've got an excellent example of the worst customer service I've ever experienced in my life, and uh, secondly, um, is that I think it's a good a good practical tip for people that are running a home business and you're looking at options for your your local internet service provider um, and just a little bit of background for about five years I've had business class cable from Comcast and this isn't a Comcast rant by the way um, because I've, I've had you know like everyone I've had good experiences and bad experiences so uh, uh, and and yes Hannah I, I am over thirty uh, by a few years so. Uh, but I appreciate the, uh, uh, you know, the compliment. Um, so I had business class uh, access from Comcast for a couple of years for one for, because I needed a static IP address and that's techno speak. But the other one was I had a, a telecommute job with a with a research company that required me to have business class. And the the implication was that you could get uh, better customer service with the business class. Uh, when the reality is the the network that's connected to your modem is exactly the same. Okay, it runs all on the same Comcast network and everything. Well, we went to move to our new place, and I called up, uh, you know, my my uh, Comcast business and said, "Hey, I want to transfer my service over to this new house, and uh, you know, can we can we switch it over there?" And uh, you know, the the answer was, "Yes, we can. It'll cost you two hundred dollars to transfer the service to a new address." And I'm like, "But all I got to do is move my modem over there, and you just switch it at the." And they're like, yeah, but it's $200 uh, unless you renew your contract for another two years, uh, in which case then we'll, then we'll do it for, uh, for free. And I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be there for two years. Uh, and so 
at the end of the day, I said, okay, let's, let's renew it. So you had a contract. And so I said, let's renew the contract. Uh, and they sent over the paperwork and my rate had gone up $10 a month from 59 to $69 a month just for the, just for the network access. And I'm like, and so just to, just to put it in terms, I was paying $60 a month for 16.3, right? 16 download, three megabits upload, uh, which isn't very fast, really. That's like old school DSL. Uh, and I'm like, hang on, time out. Uh, I don't want to pay the extra $10. And the sales guy's like, well, I can't do anything about it. That was his response. I'm just the sales guy. I can't do anything about it. I'm like, well, okay. And the other thing was I asked how much it would cost to upgrade to 50 megabit service. And he said, well, that would be $119 a month. And I said, so I emailed him back and I said, wait a minute, for $119, I said, if I buy 50 megabit service from your residential division for $29 a month and I keep my $59 a month service, I can have both for $98. And you're telling me that to upgrade to 50 megabit service will cost me 119. I said, how about if we just leave my one year contract, let it expire? Because my other option was to buy out my one year contract for $678. And I'm like, but I just, but I just want to move, right? I just want to transfer my service from one address to the other. The guy's response to me was literally, I'm just the salesman. You can't do that. You have to either upgrade or cancel. So he's saying you either need to pay me $200 to upgrade. It's like a new two-year contract. Is, I'm willing to lose your business. Yeah, what he was saying is, I, I'm not going to try to find an option for you. What's best for you doesn't mean anything to me, and I'm concerned with my, my, you know, my commission, I guess, on the sale. And I'm like, that, 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 that's why, that's why companies will, in the long run, the companies that do that will fail. Exactly. So and, what did you learn from that? What, well, two things. First of all. Um, my advice to anyone who's running a home business, if you're, if you're in like a business complex, they won't give you an option to use residential service. In most places, you don't really have a choice of who, you know, if you're going to get cable modem, it's going to be with the local provider. There, it's not like you can get someone else. Um, and if it's Comcast, and if you, can, if you can get residential service, by all means do it, because there's no difference in the service. And I, I have four times the speed for half the price. And there's, there's no downside. It used to be that, you know, or the, the, the big sell was you get better customer service with business class. And the reality is you don't. There's, there's no difference. I get the same, you know, Because the ridiculous customer business customer service. class make you feel like it's going to be better, but in reality it's not. That's one of their selling points is that they have better service. They also have an SLA, which I guess is good which means SL, SLA means service level agreement. What that means is they guarantee a certain class of service. If, uh, if they don't deliver that class of service, then you're entitled to a refund. But all that means, if I'm running a home-based business, right? If I'm running a business out of my house and my internet goes down for three days, okay? At the most, they're gonna refund me three days worth of that $60 a month that I pay. So what? I mean, that's nothing. Well, so I tell you what, in my opinion, this, this, as you're telling the story, this takes me back to why I love Nordstrom's. Okay. Is their clothes more expensive? Yes. But there's three reasons why I love Nordstrom's one, because the quality of their clothing is better and does last longer Two, no, that's not number one. Number one is I love their customer service. Like literally, <laughs> literally Nordstrom's. Their, their, their rules, like they train all of their staff people, all of them. You don't need to go see a manager, like to do what you think is best to make that customer happy. No, like no joke, man. I'm telling you, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've watched, cause I've watched like, you know, uh, them do the most amazing customer service. But what's powerful is the salesperson that's making just average wages, he's not a sales manager, he's not a store manager, has the same power to make a decision that a store manager would make. And I believe that's important in business, I really do. I, I think that business, that's a very risk-taking model, but if you trust your people and you train them right, and it really is all about the customer, that salesperson, Mike, should have been able to think what's logical to do what's best for you, and they're still gonna make money. Yeah, I mean, 
they, they could have, uh, you know, suggested something. And, and at the, at the end of the day, there was no suggestion. There was nothing. It was like, you just, you know, you have to live with it. Uh, so at the end of the day today, I'm actually paying both. Uh, it's, it's cheaper for me right now to, to keep my business class service that I'm not even using for $59 a month and get a residential service at my new place. Tom so cast. <laughs> well, I'm glad yeah, I have a bright so house so. down here, my friend. Yeah, so the bottom line is too, if you're, if you're running a home-based business, don't, don't fall for the trap. Don't get the business class because it's slower and more expensive. There's just, That's good advice. That's actually good advice. It. Yeah, it's great advice. And the, the lesson of that, too, is just because something looks like an upgrade, research it to make sure it's really an upgrade. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> well, that's that's true with almost any product or service that you're looking at. Uh, incidentally, hey, did you see that uh, today there was an announcement from Dropbox? I don't know how many of you all use Dropbox. Uh, if you don't, you should. They've got a pro service uh, plan. It's a used to be 100 gigabytes for ten dollars a month, and they literally wow. just upgraded it to a terabyte a month or a terabyte of service. You love me, right? You would take a bullet for me. <clears throat> can we do the screen share thing? And can you help me set up my Dropbox? Because I'm like ready here with Dropbox. Like, you know what I mean? I think it would save you and I a lot of frustration. That's number one. Number two. Did you hear that Burger King bought Tim Hortons? I was just going into that too. Eleven million dollars. So, is that good or bad? <sighs> it's bad. I, it's I was bad. Thinking. It's good, but it's like this. There's. It's what's amazing is how many big. For example, Starbucks owns Tivana. Literally, like Starbucks own. Like what's amazing to me is how many of these brands are buying other brands but not changing the brand. Like. Starbucks doesn't really plan on changing Tivana much, although I think they should. I think Tivana would be a whole lot more successful if they expanded their stores and made it more sit down. You know, there's no place to sit down and enjoy a cup of tea. It's really only a place where you go in and buy tea and leave. And I think speaking of relevance and speaking of changing with the times, because tea and coffee is so social, I think if Tivana is not careful, a guy like me and Mike may start up some kind of tea company that has the most amazing inside sit down vibe on earth. And pretty soon we're the new Netflix that wipes Blockbuster out. But with Howard Schultz around, I'm sure he'll listen to the, uh, I'm sure he's listening right now. Howard, you know, I love you. We're bros, but you got to You got to You got to turn t into a sit down place. There's a, yeah, there could be more of a customer draw on the, uh, on the other side, Tivana, every Tivana I've ever been into, like every square inch is optimized for selling. Uh, so they're very good at the business perspective, that's genius. But yeah. I'll tell you, I called them out on it the other day. I really did for fun. And, and they laugh. Okay. You know, you go buy two ounces. Like this is what you do. You buy two ounces of tea. Okay. 100. Listen to me. I might have, I've probably been in a Tivana store, no joke, easy to say over three to four, maybe three to four hundred times, like literally 100% of the time, they'll put my tea in the bag, and I finally call them out on it. They'll put my tea in the bag, and they'll say, 2.4 ounces, okay? Like, because you know you're paying for two ounces. So, but it's happened to me 100% of the time. So I call them, I said, let me ask you a question. I want genuine here, okay? This, this is, I'm calling out for a moment of real truth. Do they train you guys knowingly to put a little extra in there? Because that adds up. If, every, if they look at every customer, like who's going to say, no, take the, take the other four, take the other 0.4 ounces out. No, I want two ounces. Like who's really going to do that, right? Like one out of a hundred. And she looked away and she said, well, not really. I said, no, no, no look at me a second. I, eye to eye right here. Do they train you? to do the little extra ounce or the little extra bit of tea because that, that's a little bit of extra money and all that adds up. She's like, well, yeah, you know, but most people don't care if it's, I said, no, no, I'm just curious. I said, cause every time I order tea from here, like, you know, to me, that's almost like 
from from the business making money side, I get it. From like being authentic, that ticks me off. Like the more I think about it, the more I don't want to go to Tivana again because I'm like, you know what? Be authentic about it. If I want 2.4 ounces, I'll order 2.4 ounces. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. From a, now, from a business standpoint. Now that I've shared my experience, now I'm mad about it because I feel I'm all about being authentic. I'm not about the hidden fees. I'm, I'm about just, to me, the way to win nowadays is just be straight up, straight up real. Yeah, I agree. I would say from a business standpoint, though, it's brilliant. That's the easiest upsell ever. That's a 20% like upsell like that. But like I said, from a business perspective, I get it. I Hey, because who's going to – like, I've never done it. I've never – in all the years – I bought tea from Tivana. I've never like said, no, 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 two ounces. I, I'm going to try it next time just to see. You know what I'm saying? But I can tell you this, Mike, out of the hundreds of times I bought tea there, they've done it every time. And they, it's funny as how they look at you like, 2.4, two, two okay, 2.6, you know. And they say it like as if no big deal. I'm sorry I accidentally threw a little more, more tea in there, you know. And I'm not a tightwad. I spend money on value. I, I'm, I have no problem spending money on things that I value. You know what I'm saying? It's the principle of it. Mike, do you have a different take on this? Not at all. I would next time just go, yeah, if you're going to throw the four tenths in for free, I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what they should do. That's what, that's what they should do. From the bottom line, it's, but be honest with you, after a while, because of the Internet, people start telling these kind of stories. Customers nowadays, Mike, listen, this is where you can't have entitlement right. thinking. Nowadays, people can go anywhere they want with their business. You hear me? I mean, I have to pass two tea places, and I'm in the middle of literally trying to start one myself. And, but I have to pass two tea places to go to Tivan. Do you think that their tea is really that amazing for me to put up with this not-so-genuine Two, two, little extra over, okay? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I love Dave's tea. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, especially, Al, if it's a good-looking girl, what are you going to say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, uh, yeah, hello, look like a big dork. So if it's a good-looking girl that puts the extra tea in, then you're really not going to say anything. You'll be like, oh, yeah, it's no biggie. I'm a baller. You know what? Here. In fact, throw a little more in there. <laughs> That's good. Just... <clears throat> hey, great show. Um, we're a little bit over time. We're a little bit over time. But we both got to rant, so that was good. That's a rant. We're pumped. Hey, we love you guys. Mike, we'll be back tomorrow, you and I. For family and relationships, we go all in tomorrow. No hold back. Speak, speaking of, like, for fuel for success, we're just straight up honest. Ask these questions. We're going to give you our real feelings right here. There's nothing right. There's nothing uh, watered down. There's nothing politically correct here. This is our show. We say what we want, how we want, when we want, but we're going to bring you the real. So we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, my friends. Feel for success. If this shows a help to you at all, you think maybe this can make your boss a better boss, send them the link. Say, boss, man, I was watching this show. I think you'll love it. Let's let our employees watch this. Let's have our staff watch this. Let's definitely have our manager watch this, right? I mean, there's going to be things in this show on Thursdays that are going to help all business. So if it's a blessing, pass it along, my friends. We love you. Those that watch live, God bless. Those that are watching on the archive, God bless you as well. You're just as important. Enjoy your day. We'll see you all tomorrow.